Today, I'm going to answer a question a lot of you maybe have been wondering about me. Am I religious? Good question. I'm going to read from my blog because I redid this one a wee bit since I wrote the book. So, it really depends on your definition of religion. In according to Merriam-Webster Online Dictionary, religion may be defined as the state of a religious person, such as a nun in her 20th year of religion. The service and worship of God are the supernatural. The commitment or devotion to religious faith are observance. A personal set or institutionalized system of religious attitudes, beliefs, and practices. Archaic. Scrupulous conformity. A cause, principle, or a system of beliefs held to with adder and faith. By reading that definition, some people might rightly assume I am very religious, but their picture of what being religious is usually a picture of what I am not. I am a Christian, yes, but my faith does not center around a bunch of regulations and rules upon which I judge my behavior and the behaviors of others to make sure that we are all towing the line just to make sure we keep in God's good books. I don't believe that saying specific prayers or performing certain rituals will put me in God's graces. I don't worship him out of a sense of dry tradition. I do worship him from a heart of gratefulness for all that he has done for me today and not just for what he did for me 2,000 years ago by dying on a cross and raising from the dead, although I could spend eternity in giving him thanks just for that. No, I serve him because he showed me first how to be a servant through his actions. He reached out to me long before I reached out to him. I worship him for what he's doing in my life and for what he will do for me tomorrow. But most of all, I worship him just because I love him. I love his heart. I love his works. I love the way he does things. I love his transforming power at work in the lives of those I love. Of course I want to please him. I want to please anyone that I love. I love to discover what makes my loved ones happy, for example. If they like a certain type of coffee, you can bet that I'll try to have it when they come over for a cup of coffee. Their joy is my joy. When I make wrong choices that hurt his heart, of course my heart hurts. I can feel his disappointment, but I never feel his judgment. There are things that I don't do that I am tempted to do because I know these things will drive a wedge between my heart and his. Of course, I want my life to reflect his loving character to the world around me. And so I do read the Bible to learn more about his character so I can get a really good idea about how he does things so I do a good job in representing him in the world around me. Sometimes I mess up. But when I go to him in humility and transparency and without any excuses, I find that he's waiting there and he forgives me before I can even get the words out of my mouth. He doesn't hold grudges. He doesn't wait with one shoe ready to drop for me to screw up just one more time. His mercy and love are new every morning. No, I'm not religious in the way you might assume me to be. I would find that pretty unfulfilling. I love to laugh and I love to have fun. I love to learn and discover who I truly am and how I fit into this glorious world. I am still discovering 
me, even at my age. I love meeting new people and finding out what makes them tick and what excites them. I don't reject people just because they don't believe what I believe or even if they typecast me as being something that I am not when they learn that I am a Christ follower. It all boils down to this. I am in a relationship with the God of the universe, as incredible as that sounds. And it's not because of anything I have done or that I will do. Our relationship all revolves around this simple truth. I took him up on an offer. I came to him, gave him all of my junk, laid down all of my burdens, and I gave him my heart. I gave him all of me, all the messy places, all the good places, all the places I'd rather not look at, I gave them all to him. I am his and he is mine. Honestly, it's more of a love story than anything else. I love this quote by D.L. Moody. A rule I have had for years is to treat the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal friend. He is not a creed, a mere doctrine, but it is he himself we have. There's no personal application today because this is my story and your story is your story. And if you haven't let Christ into your story yet, I pray that you'll discover what a wonderful friend he can truly be.